Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be making a really quick art journal page and creating an ombre background really quickly and easily. So I'm starting off with some colours of the Dina Wakely paints and I'm using marine, peacock or ocean and turquoise. And I'm using a paintbrush instead of the scraper which I was originally going to use. The reason I decided to use paintbrush is I wanted to actually have my colours blend together. Now when I use the scraper do the layered technique, I tend to scrape the paint out, dry it, put the other colour over so you get this layered effect. By using the paintbrush I'm actually blending all the colours together which gives you this really cool ombre effect um, in the background. You can see I'm trying to have all the brush strokes going in the same way as well. Um, <clears throat> that goes off a little bit at the top trying to get those top little bits covered but um, it just gives you that directional um, feel on your page. So at the very top I've added in some lighter colours. I accidentally picked up the light purple and then I went back in with some of the um, lighter blue just to blend it all in together and then I'm just going to put a little bit of dark back down at the bottom again. So one of my secrets to doing things like this is, or to get blended paint effects, is to not actually clean my paintbrush to pick up all the different colours and let the, the paintbrush do the hard work of mixing the colours for you. Um, if I'd cleaned my brush out each time, I'd probably have, you know, much stronger lines or delineations of colour by having my dirty paintbrush. It's blended it all together. Now, obviously, I'm using tonal um, blue tones to do this so it's not going to mix and make brown and so on you need to be when you're doing this and obviously it's sort of implied with the ombre effect you're going to be using colors in the same color palette to do this once I'd finished painting my background and dried it off I decided I want to add some mic making over the, the back just to give it a little bit of interest so I'm using my good old bubble wrap and again I'm doing the total thing with the inks that I'm using. So I'm using some lighter inks and some dark, darker blues. And being careful kind of to put the darker colours towards the bottom and the lighter colours up at the top. So this just adds some texture I suppose in the background, a little bit of interest. I'm using the archival inks to do this as well and the great thing about the archival inks over the particularly Dina Wakely paints is because the Dina Wakely paints have a, a slightly matte finish and the archival ink is a oil-based ink it has a little bit of shine to it so when you actually pick up your page and move it round, you'll get this um, shine coming off where the ink stamped um, as opposed to the matte area so it just gives an extra sort of glimmer effect to your page. Now the stamps I'm using or the long stamps that you see me using are from Darkroom Door from the new release and you've probably noticed that I haven't used a block to stamp any of this out. For doing stamping I don't tend to use a block anyway so I'm, I'm not going to say I do but particularly for stamping like this where I don't particularly want harsh lines I like to have them off the block so I can sort of bend it and not get perfect impressions every time because I want it to be a little bit out there. When I'd finished doing this I really liked what I had but I, it wasn't finished. I wasn't sure what to do so I was just playing around and I had a new stencil I wanted to play and um, try out and I decided I wanted to do the ghosting technique and I was so impressed with how it came up. Um, it was just really crisp and clear. I don't know why. I think my it was just the gods aligned. My wet wipe was obviously wet enough and my paint was you know, not too dry but not too wet so it wiped off really easily so it, um, it ended up being pretty perfect. This colour combination is one I've seen um, on Instagram particularly from Megan Quinlan. Um, if you check out her feed it's just amazing the stuff that she does and I just loved it but the other reason I chose if, to put the fuchsia over the top was because I um, decided I was going to use this image from the Collage Collective. So the Collage Collective is um, again from Ranger from Dina Wakely and it's a book full of Dina's artwork and each page is double sided with artwork so you can see I've you know chosen to use the face rather than that pink artwork on the other side. You do need to you know be really careful about what you're choosing um, 
but there's two of each image in the book so you don't miss out on anything um, and it's just a great way again to finish off a page really quickly um, I could have sat there and no sorry <clears throat> I could have drawn a face I certainly couldn't have drawn that face I love that face <laughs> but it would have taken me time and effort because again drawing faces isn't something that comes naturally to me and I would have had to black out or white out the background so I could get the detail over it by being able to cut it out of a, the magazine and stick it into my book just made you know something fun and funky on my page that I could do in half an hour so once I'd finished doing that again I really liked it but it just wasn't balanced I needed something on the other page so at the moment I'm going through my phone in Pinterest and I've looked up some quotes and I found this one which really sort of summed up the day that I was having and usually when I'm finding quotes or something on the page it's either something that appeals to my emotions that day which is sort of what this one was or um, it might be something that's inspired by what's on the page so if I had lots of leafy stuff it might be a forest quote or if I had a, a female figure it might be strong women quotes so that's where I tend to to go with getting my my inspiration for the page so I've got if your path demands you walk through hell walk as if you own the place to finish off the piece and to tie both pages together I'm just doing some really random dots um, with my Posca paint pen and just little sprinkly dots all over the place so it just ties both pages together I tend to do it in th three places on my page um, that's just me you can do it all over if you wanted to but just to give that sort of random effect in the background um, and that's the end of the story really this is how it all finishes off so here's a close-up of the page you can see that really vibrant ghosting technique just balances the page and you can see that in the um, image that I've got out of the, the collage collective it's got that little splash of purpley pink color in the hair so it sort of helps tie it together um, so please have a go at doing that tech um, background technique is super super simple but it's lots of fun to do and it's um, something if you've got half an hour in your book that you can quickly whip out and go together if you are looking for any of the products that I've used in from Ranger um, check out my description box below and there's some links there that will send you in the right direction until next time bye for now